You know, just yesterday we talked about the definition of freedom that the right adheres to right now is very authoritarian. The freedom to deny other people things, the freedom to tell others what it is they can and can't do the freedom. You know, we, we talked about that yesterday. Um, there's another element to this authoritarian slide that I, I think deserves its own discussion, which is that the Republican Party is moving in the direction of pulling out of future presidential debates. The Republican National Committee says it will require candidates to pledge to not participate in debates run by the Commission on Presidential Debates. What would replace them if anything was unclear? This is an extraordinarily authoritarian move. Now, there's sort of like the logical reason why they would do this. And then there's the reality that it fits into this bigger authoritarian picture. And we'll go through both of those aspects in a second. The New York Times reporter Maggie Haberman reported the RNC is preparing to change its rules to require presidential candidates that want to be a Republican nominee to pledge not to participate in what have historically been the official presidential debates sponsored by the Commission on Presidential Debates. Republican committee officials alert, alerted the debate commission to their plans in a letter sent Thursday. If the change goes forward, it would be one of the most substantial shifts in how presidential and vice presidential debates have been conducted since the commission began organizing debates more than 30 years ago. The nonprofit commission was founded by the two parties in 1987. It codified debates as a permanent part of presidential elections, describes itself as nonpartisan. Republicans have complained for a decade that the process favored Democrats. Uh, the move by the RNC was an outgrowth of those long held complaints and came after months of discussions between the commission and party officials. This uh, discussion apparently started last year. The Republican Party chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel, demanded changes be made to how debates were held. The change requiring candidates to refuse participation is to be voted on at the RNC winter meeting in February. If they move forward, it's unclear what that means for future debates. So there are two pieces to this. OK, first, let's talk about the sort of like, well, yeah, if you have no issue based platform on which you would debate, why would you debate? And what I mean by that is increasingly started with. I mean, listen, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but it, this started a really long time ago. But more acutely, George W. Bush became less and less issue focused and more kind of ideology based. When Barack Obama became president, Republicans went completely crazy and abandoned policy 90 percent. And then under Trump, there's been no more policy at all. If you don't have policy on which to debate, why would you go to a debate? OK, that that sort of makes sense. But then it goes further. If you're not trying to win on the issues, right, if you're winning on trying to win on gerrymandering, voter suppression, bogus post election tactics, legal challenges and the like. Debates don't really have a part in that. You don't really need to convince people to vote for you. And the third piece of this is that this is very on brand in terms of being autocratic and authoritarian. And former David Pakman show guest, guest Ruth Ben Giat wrote a really good piece in her Substack called Demagogues Don't Debate. The GOP mimics Putin and Orban refusing to participate in presidential debates is a symptom of the Republicans embrace of authoritarianism. This is a really good article to check out a good blog post from Ruth Ben Giat, um, who writes debates between presidential candidates enact the democratic principle of mutual tolerance. The notion that those who don't share your political views have a right to free expression. The public hears an exchange of views by two individuals on equal footing, bound by the same rules and forced by an impartial arbiter. When they say we're not going to do that anymore, it furthers this idea that number one, they people with political disagreements can't even be in the same room as each other, um, but also uh, is the uh, uh, furtherance of other aspects of authoritarianism. Personality cults, as Ruth Ben Giat writes, posit the leader as a man above all others. The egalitarian staging and format of debates makes them dangerous to his brand. Since authoritarians sustain power through disinformation, threat, corruption and fixing elections, who knows what might be exposed if they submit to spontaneous questioning by a rival or a third party. And that is a fundamental aspect of this. And I won't read Ruth's entire post, but she talks about Putin understanding this and his history of refusing to debate. 
and talks about Orban, a Putin client who has followed that lead. Orban hasn't debated since 16 years ago uh, after a really bad performance in a 2006 debate. So there's two aspects of this and there's the they don't run on policy. So why even talk to the opposition? Sure, that's fair. But then there's also yet another way in this which in which this idea of not getting on stage with your opponent mimics and mirrors that which we've seen other authoritarian strong men do uh, around the world over the last 20 years. So very much on brand with this extreme authoritarian dictatorial slide that we've seen from the Republican Party. The Republican Party will vote next month as to whether they are finalizing this decision not to participate in the debates. My instinct is they're going to do it. I don't think this, you know, it seems like the type of thing they would kind of decide beforehand. Do we have the votes for it? Uh, but we'll see next month and we'll tell you when there is an ultimate uh, decision made by them. In the meantime, you can let me know your thoughts about this wildly autocratic decision uh, by finding me on Twitter at D Pacman.